You're on the agenda. Thank you so much for being here. I want to thank you all for coming. And I want to thank Bob especially for inviting me to speak here. And son Dominic for making the arrangements for me to be here. And uh, son Dominic Makaji, sorry. Uh, so, Makaji means respectful mother. So she is like the mother of the temple, and uh, that's why we use this particular term. Um, so, uh, again, thank you all for coming tonight. I'm going to speak uh, on a topic called the mystery of reincarnation, uh, according to our Vedic literatures, according to the Bhagavad Gita, the Shrimad Bhagavatam, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, what Srila Prabhupada has graciously taught all of us through his books, through his recordings, and uh, I hope to be able to uh, enable everyone to go home, ideally, with a clearer understanding of reincarnation, of uh, the law of karma, but most important, why it's important to transcend all of that and eventually to go back home, back to the eternal world whence we originally came and develop the uh, necessary amount of love of God which will enable us to reach that stellar place. Uh, so uh, how many of us know the Jaya Radhamadapa prayers? Is there anybody here? One, two, three. Okay, we shall we sing that before starting a, um, a a talk of this sort. So if I can borrow someone's cartels and I can read that. The meaning of it is, if I can remember it, all glories to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Lord Krishna engages in pastimes in the groves of Vrindavan. He is the lover of the gopis, the lifter of Govardhan Hill, the son of Mother Yashoda, and the delighter of the inhabitants of Raj. He wanders along the banks of the river Yamuna, and we offer our humble obeisances unto his lotus feet. Is this a no chanting or hearing? Jai 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 Jai
Sanskrit, and I don't have a clue to what the person was talking about, and uh, and I know that other people may have that same feeling, or that, and and you've come here to gain something, to, to to learn something, or to expose yourself to something, and my desire is to provide to provide that, and not to confuse or uh, flummox or bewilder anyone uh, with what I have to say. So I keep my Sanskrit verses down to the very minimum. Uh, except the first one that we will do, uh, which is what tonight's talk is based upon. So, without any further ado, um, you going to be a good girl tonight? Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes I have a little problem with some of the temples. Uh, the kids get together, and while I'm trying to talk and keep a train of thought, uh, they have their little party going on separately. <laughs> so I have to ask the parents, when it gets beyond my ability to concentrate anymore, to please take the child outside. And uh, I hope that, I don't, she seems so disciplined uh, and so controlled. I don't think that's the best thing tonight. Uh, but don't surprise me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's do the mantra together. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So I'll be reading from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, and verse number 8. I'm going to read the Sanskrit because that is traditional and uh, it also has many good vibes. I've been told that Sanskrit is the original language, the language of the gods, that's what they speak. And it's based upon spiritual principles, so I will say the Sanskrit, Srila Prabhupada always uh, gave the Sanskrit, um, the verse in Sanskrit. So I will chant it first. Shariram yada vapno ti Yachchap put crane Yachchap Yachchap put crama ishbara Gritvaitani samyati Bayo gandam Ivashayat which means the living entity in the material world, the living entity is being referred to is the soul, which we are. The living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas. Thus he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another. So let's all repeat. The living entity, the living entity in, the in the material world carries his different conceptions, his different conceptions of, life of life from one body to another, from one body to another, another as the air carries aromas. Thus he takes one kind of body and again quits it and to, take another. to take another. So it's being compared to the air which carries aromas. We know that it, it's in one area, then the wind blows it, and then it's in this area, and the wind blows it, it's here, and it keeps moving from place to place. Similarly, the living entity, he's in one body, and then uh, after he finishes his business in that body, and his karma that has been scheduled to take place in that body, he then leaves that body, and then again enters another body to perform different actions uh, on the basis of karma that he has set in motion from his previous life. Each life we are setting in motion activities which will have a reaction, and that reaction will be shown in the next life. Unless, of course, there is no next life, and I want to talk a little about that, and that's ideal. Uh, the next life meaning another material body. So, let me go into the, uh, the purport of the commentary. Here the living entity is described as Ishvara, the controller of his own body. If he likes, he can change his body to a higher grade, and if he likes, he can, me, if he likes, he can move to a lower class. Minute independence is there. The change of his body undergoes, that, that he, uh, the change that his body undergoes depends upon him. At the time of death, the consciousness he has created will carry him on to the next type of body. If he has made his consciousness like that of a cat or dog, he is sure to change to a cat's or a dog's body. And if he has fixed his consciousness on godly qualities, he will change into the form of a demigod. And if he is in Krishna consciousness, he will be transferred to Krishna Loka. Loka means like a planet, place, to the place where Krishna dwells. It's in a different world. It's called the eternal world, the transcendental world. 
to Krishna Loka in the spiritual world and will associate with Krishna. It is a false claim that after the annihilation of this body, everything is finished. The individual soul is transmigrating from one body to another, and his present body and present activities are the background of his next body in due course. It is stated here that the subtle body, the subtle body is, is a counterpart of the physical body, only it is subtle, you cannot see it with the physical eyes. A person who has some advancement in spiritual life can see it, not only can see it, but actually can leave his physical body in that body. That body is sometimes referred to as an astral body. <clears throat> So that body, uh, there's no particular value or merit in leaving that body, although sometimes uh, saints do that. If they are in one place, there's a, there's a per perfection or mystical power, which is known as bilo bilocation. And what happens is that the saint, when I say a saint, I mean a person who's doing a tremendous amount of loving service for the world, at the behest of the Supreme Lord. So he may be called upon to go someplace else, but he's like a thousand miles away. So due to this power that he gets from the purification that he goes through, he can leave his physical body in that counterpart body or subtle body or astral body. <clears throat> it's like almost like a ghostly type of body, but you don't see it with your physical eyes. Uh, so he can immediately leave and go a thousand miles away in just a second and then materialize that subtle body. And so that somebody sees him a thousand miles away, and there have been numerous cases like that which have been reported, uh, where a person was in one place and he was in another place a thousand miles away. And uh, very often when people are um, given sainthood, uh, there are certain qualifications, certain miracles that have to be uh, perform have been performed, and people who are witnesses of these, they bring forth these types of uh, testimony. So he can go there, talk to these other people as he sees fit, or just do what he has to see, and then immediately return to his physical body. Uh, this one Saint, Saint Vincent Farrar, he was on the, he happened to be on the, uh, he was giving a talk, a sermon, and he heard a call for help. So he excused himself and just sat down, closed his eyes, and for all intents and purposes, it appeared that he was asleep, but he wasn't. He was someplace else, thousands of miles away. And then he came back, and that came out much later on where he actually had gone. He didn't make a big thing, and he didn't tell anybody what happened. He just, everybody presumed that he just wanted to rest his mind because he had been speaking for about, that he happened to be a genius speaker. He could speak for four or five hours continuously. Uh, he had such powers that are unbelievable. He would speak in one language, and if a person had a different, spoke a different language, somehow or other, by God's arrangement, that person heard the talk in his language. Uh, I had never heard that one before. But anyway, uh, a number of people were able to tell in their language what uh, Vincent Farrar happened to have been talking about. And so I, I'm simply mentioning so that we have an understanding that we have another body in this physical body. And uh, when one is advanced, he can leave by it. Uh, and generally, when one dies, he leaves by this body. And uh, then... Uh, Eventually, that body, of course, is lost, and you have the mind, the intelligence, the ego, and then we'll get into that as to how we reincarnate the very process of reincarnation, which is really a very fascinating subject. Uh, the first question that may come to us is, why, why should we reincarnate in the first place? What is the necessity? What is the value? Uh, the reason we reincarnate is two, twofold. The first is that um, many of us have desires which are yet, not yet fulfilled. 
and we leave our physical body or we die to the physical body before we have fulfilled those particular ambitions. Some people want to be musicians, they want to be a master concert pianist, or wants to be a violinist, or a person may want to be an actor, or a lawyer, or a medical uh, a person who makes scientific discoveries to, that help humanity, or uh, different ambitions people have. They want to be actors, and, and they want to win Academy Awards. So ambitions drive us back to this world, because Sorry. So do cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, the point that I'm trying to uh, make is that because the desire has been not fulfilled and the person has some frustration and he has a, some uh, feeling that something has not been completed, and because it hasn't been completed, uh, he, he's in a lurch, so to speak. And he desires to come back in order to fulfill that ambition. It could be an athlete, maybe he wanted to play on the San Francisco. Well, I got an accompaniment now. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. There's something new. First the cell phone, and then now that. And now we, what was that, a gong? Yes, yeah, the, the grandfather clock. Oh, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Good. Reminds me of my nice. grandfather now. <laughs> So, getting back to the main point is that we have these ambitions where a person may want to be a sports athlete, or want to be a basketball star, a football star, a baseball star, never achieved it, got to the point of maybe the minor leagues, or maybe he was just a, a stringer, <clears throat> even in the major leagues, but you know, he didn't, he didn't hit 75 home runs, and he wanted to do that, and, and so that never happened. So, you need to come back. The person comes back so that he can achieve that. But it's not that you can just desire to come back and achieve it. Quite often one has to do a lot of um, what we call pious activities. Uh, a pious activity uh, is a, what we call a very 